Hey, what is up guys, it's Rob. Hope you're doing really good out there. So it's no secret that I love Gibson SG guitars. I'm a big fan. And I feel like because I'm such a big fan, my content on my guitars and Gibson SGs in general over the years has been quite biased, obviously focusing a lot on the good things. So today I thought I would flip that and talk about the bad things. So after owning this guitar for four years and I now own two Gibson SGs, I feel like I'm experienced enough with these guitars to talk about the bad things, the bad side, and the worst things about Gibson SGs. So the first bad thing about Gibson SGs is that they are just really, really heavy guitars. I mean, well, this one's not that heavy, but maybe, no, no, that's not that heavy either, to be honest. Both weight, I mean, this one's a bit lighter, actually. This one's a bit heavier. So as well as the weight of these guitars, they're actually quite bulky and really quite uncomfortable to sit with. And when you play it, I mean, this one, it's also, I mean, it's not that bulky. Three centimeters. How thick are Les Pauls? I mean, it is kind of like grooved along the edge to sort of fit about, I mean, eh, it kind of just sits nicely against, with these little cutaways like that. That's, who said that these were uncomfy? Everybody knows that Gibson SGs are really hard to play because they have a really high action, which means the strings are really far off the wood. So when you go to press down, you have to really press down hard. I mean, honestly, I don't think I could fit a piece of paper through there. Ah, oh, that's crazy. What about this one? That is absolutely no effort at all to press down. I thought it'd be a lot more effort, to be honest. Tuning stability is also quite a big issue with these guitars. Everybody knows Gibson SGs, they just never stay in tune. I mean, if I play a chord, I mean, it's in tune now, but if I play like some bends and stuff, now if I play, it's still in tune. It's not even gone out a little bit. I think it's got better, if anything got better whilst I was playing it. Now, of course, we're guitar players, and one thing that we really like is that when we stand up with our guitar, it stays exactly where we want it, or where we put it, to be honest. And everybody knows that Gibson SGs, one thing they're quite known for is having neck dive. If I stand up with this guitar, and I put the strap around me, so I'm holding the guitar now, but if I let go of it, so if I let go of it, I mean, it literally falls about two centimeters. If I hold it here and I let go of it, that's not neck dive, that's gravity. And who walks around with a guitar like this? I mean, if you stood up with your guitar, you're gonna be holding it, so. Uh, intonation is, is an issue, you know? If I play a C chord at the bottom of the guitar, and then a C chord at the top of the guitar, D. It's identical, it's exactly as it should be. I don't understand. Not heavy, not bulky, action's all right. They stay in tune, intonation's good, neck dive's not that bad. I bet if I take my finger and I press down on the guitar there and I'll leave it for a second. Fingerprint. Fingerprint, fingerprint. And I bet they just stay there for ages and just like making it look really bad. I mean, they wipe off quite easy, actually. It's still in tune. Who said that Gibson's go out of tune? Where did that come from? It's not got a tremolo, but you can get one with a tremolo, you can get a vibrola, you can get something like that, one with a big tailpiece and a whammy bar, or a Bigsby, you can get a Bigsby system, so that's irrelevant as well. So there you go guys, there's just a quick video taking a look at some of the bad things about Gibson SG guitars. I mean, I tried. I did try. So all jokes aside, I did actually want to make a video talking about the things that I don't like about the Gibson SG because I have made a lot of positive and very one-sided videos about it over the years. So I intended to make a video talking about the bad things and I sat down to think about them and I'm not even making it up, I just couldn't think of anything bad about this guitar. The only thing that even came close and I don't know if this is a bad quality of the guitar or whether it's just one of those things, is that I'm very precious with this guitar in terms of its durability. I feel like other guitars that I own, if I dropped them, God forbid, I 
feel like they would be okay. They might take a few lumps, but they would survive. Whereas I feel like if I dropped this guitar, game over, it would be in guitar heaven after that. Especially at the headstock here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but the headstock is actually, it just feels very fragile. It might not be, it might be quite sturdy, but it's not something that I'm willing to put to the test. I certainly wouldn't put it on the floor and stand on it or anything like that, just to see if it will hold my weight. That's the only thing that I could think of with this guitar if I'm looking for a bad point is that I'm just not entirely confident in it being strong enough to withstand a fall or a knock or anything like that. So I am quite precious with this guitar. Is that a bad thing though? You're gonna have to let me know in the comments because I can't decide. It's the only thing I could think of to say in this video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video for what it was worth. I hope it was at least slightly amusing, but yeah. I love Gibson SG guitars. If they're not your cup of tea, then that's absolutely fine. We all like different stuff. We're all guitar players and we have different tastes and it would be super boring if we all like the same stuff. And if there is something specific about Gibson SGs that you don't like, some bad qualities, then again, leave those in the comments. If you're new to my channel, then subscribe. I make lots of guitar and music related content and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Take care.